Back in Minute Maid Park, tie ball game and the Astros closer in to pitch. Josh Hader, last season in 61 games, you see those great numbers. Since wearing that Astro uniform in two innings, he has been brilliant. Racking up five strikeouts in those two innings. He's only walked a batter, and that's pretty much it. He's been a very good fastball slider mix. You're going to see it right here on our StatCast 3D. Everything on the edges, high velocity in the mid to upper 90s, and a couple of very good sliders that you can see hitting both the inside corner and outside corners. So great stuff early on from Josh Hader. Facing Jose Trevino here to start the inning. Trevino one for three with an RBI. A little flare single as a pop up single his first time up. He has since popped up and struck out. Hader in striking out those five hitters struck out the first five batters he faced in an Astros uniform. And in doing so, he set an Astros franchise record. No other pitcher had struck out the first five batters he faced as an Astro. The previous record was four, set by the lefty Frank DePino back in 82. Hader struck out John Carlos Stanton, Anthony Rizzo, and Anthony Volpe on opening day Thursday. And then struck out as Waldo Cabrera and Trent Grisham last night before Glaber Torres walked. And two pitches fouled away. So Hader now in his three outings for the Astros has pitched with his team down one on Thursday, down two yesterday, and tied this afternoon. Still has not had a save opportunity. That one down two and two. But Hader and Taylor Scott now pitching in three of the first four games of the season. Two two rides in on Trevino and the count goes full. Vino called out on strikes his last time up. Off the foot of Hader, Bregman bare hands, throws in time to get Trevino. Great play by Breggy. Hader appreciates the effort. And hopefully he shakes that off too. Looks to be okay, but that's definitely going to warrant a visit from the Astros dugout as it skips towards Alex, who did not give up on the play, and that's the biggest thing. He didn't hesitate. He broke immediately towards that baseball and was able to make that bare hand play and make the throw. We've seen it so many times on slow rollers where Alex is able to bare hand it, but a huge play to get that, keep that first runner off the base pass. Hater. Said he's okay, doesn't even need to throw any warm up pitches. He's ready to go. And now he'll face Oswaldo Cabrera. Cabrera, we mentioned yesterday, faced Hader as a left handed hitter. He's normally a switch hitter, but three times in his career he has batted lefty against a lefty, including yesterday against Josh Hader, and he struck out on the slider. But for whatever reason, he has chosen Hader. As a guy he's going to hit lefty against. Well, I feel like that slider that he struck out on would be the reason you switch hit against a guy like Josh Hader because the slider would be coming back to you as a right handed hitter. I mean, who are we to question the potential American League player of the week? But he's down to the yeah. count 0 oh 2 here. But he struck out against Hader hitting lefty yesterday. He has hit righty in this series against Fromber Valdez and Parker Mashinsky. But he has chosen lefty on lefty against one of the best lefties in baseball. And it almost didn't Could have work. gone down with yeah, that slider that was, again. That, that was, was a great close. pitch. How do you take that? But you, you don't have an answer. You never hit same no. same side against same side. I, I did because it, uh, because I was in pain hitting right handed. <laughs> I think I had a broken thumb and I was out there playing. I faced Terry Mulholland in a game hitting left handed and Felipe Alou knew I couldn't hit right handed. I'm like Felipe I, I'm switch it. He goes. That's okay. You can hit on the other side. I said, "All right." How <laughs> so weird was that? That was bizarre. He threw me a curveball. I about ran into the dugout. Now, Oswaldo doesn't like the call, but that almost took the glove off Yiner, so yeah. he couldn't frame it up. But that is a strike, and we'll see if that experiment continues against Hater in the future. <laughs> 
Every Tuesday night is Dollar Dog Night, presented by Texas Chili Company at Minute Maid Park. Enjoy $1 hot dogs all game long every Tuesday night game throughout the year. Visit Astros.com slash Dollar Dogs to get your Dollar Dog Night tickets today. Dollar Dog this week will feature the opening day starter from Valdez against Jose Barrios for the Toronto Blue Jays. That's a good matchup. It is a good matchup. Good team in Toronto coming in behind the New York Yankees as we make a tour of the American League East. Yeah, how about that Yankees and Blue Jays out of the gates. This one a little oh, flare. Jose Abreu just puts his glove up in the air. That'll be a base hit for Glaber Torres. Only the second hit of the series for Glaber. He's now two for 15. But a little punch shot finds its way into right field. Yeah, we shouldn't be shocked. We've seen a lot of that today. A lot of soft hit, low exit velocity swings that end up being base hits and that's just a good job of getting in the kitchen of Glaber Torres who fights it off and drops it in shallow right field. You know getting back to switch hitters hitting on the same side as the pitcher a lot of switch hitters would face Mariano Rivera the Hall of Fame closer for the Yankees back in the day they would face him right handed because his cutter was so good at jamming you left handed that you just figured you had a better chance of trying to slap it the other way with that late cut movement that he had. Now Juan Soto lefty on lefty takes a pitch down one on one and one. Well that one you could justify a yes. little bit. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure firm. out the mindset of us Waldo going lefty lefty against Hader with that good slider. But that's what he has chosen back to back days. Now there goes the runner the pitch is off the plate and easily into second base is Torres. Torres has his first steal of the year. He stole 13 bags last year. He had a good jump on Hader. Yeah, he realized that Hader wasn't paying much attention and he decided to take a chance on that first move and got in there easily getting that go ahead run potentially at second base with Soto up. That's a good pitch on the inside edge and it's two and two. That's the thing with haters. You can't just sit on a slider on the outside corner if you're that left handed hitter or right handed hitter. He can move that slider all over the zone in or out. That's why you saw Soto kind of lock up and stand up a little bit because he wasn't ready for that pitch to break over the inside. Tried to do it again. Same exact pitch. Yeah. And it's, it's tough for that left handed hitter to hold his ground and still keep his hands in position to be able to attack that pitch. Soto is two for four in his career against Hader. Both of his hits have come against the fastball. Runner on second in a 3 3 game. Inside, full count. I thought that was a great call. I love that pitch sequence right there. A couple of sliders on the inside. He swings at that second one. If he gets this on that edge of the plate, he would have blown up Juan Soto. There's, he wanted no part of that, especially at 97. So big pitch, big pitch coming here. Aaron Judge on deck. As good as Soto has been on in this series, and as much as the Astros have handled Judge, you'd rather Hater be able to get the lefty here and not worry about Judge. There goes the runner swinging a base hit in the left. That'll give the Yankees the lead. Juan Soto continues his massive series as he knocks in Glaber Torres. So the steal comes back to hurt the Astros as Soto makes it a four to three game. Soto is a tough at bat. And you give him a little bit of credit staying on this fastball away, just kind of poking it the other way, able to cover it even off the plate. That is the first run allowed by Haters and Astro, and his first two hits allowed. The Juan Soto, three for five today, nine for 17 in his first series as a Yankee. And oh, by the way, he threw out the potential tying run at home plate. On opening day Thursday, what a start to his Yankees career. I know a lot of Astro fans probably don't want to hear it, but he looks like he belongs in that Yankee uniform, in that atmosphere of the Bronx Zoo. Oh, but that was a that was a that was one of the better at bats we're gonna see. I mean, between two pretty brilliant all-stars as far as the pitcher and the hitter that was a great sequence that was a well placed fastball too he just yep got got, I mean forced him to go off the plate to go get it 
Now Aaron Judge. These two guys have only matched up once in their careers, and it was all the way back in 2017. One and one to count. Judge today, 0 for 3 with a sacrifice fly. Astros will have Jeremy Pena, Jake Myers, and Jose Altuve do up in the bottom of the ninth as Judge is down the count here, one and two. Josh Hader will throw his 25th pitch of the inning here with a 1 2 count to Aaron Judge. Got him. Hader strikes out Judge to end the inning, but a couple of two out hits and a stolen base give the Yankees a 4 to 3 lead heading to the bottom of the ninth. And Joey Loperfito putting up big numbers in a couple of games down there in AAA. Ready to tap into that power early. 375 average. The on base percentage is correct at 333, but he has three bombs. Those are three hits he has this season. Seven RBIs off to a quick start down there in Sugarland. Jeremy Pena leads off facing the Yankee closer Clay Holmes. The Astros have seen Holmes three of the four games in the series. And the two previous times he was out there for a save and picked those saves up going two innings. Allowed three hits in that initial opportunity but pitched a clean second save going an inning and a, only hitting a batter. He's yet to strike out an Astro in this series. He hit Jeremy Pena in the game yesterday. Pena got on base and brought the tying run to the plate but then Mauricio Dubai grounded out to end the game. Oh Pena. Jake Myers and Jose Altuve do up against Clay Holmes here. Pena two for three. Takes one down. It's two and two. Astros ten hits. Yankees ten hits. Astros trail four to three in the ninth. Trying to avoid a four game sweep. Towards the right side. Pass Torres in the right field. Jeremy Pena, three hit day, leadoff base runner of the ninth. Nice piece. Talk about that sinking fastball all the time. But Jeremy Pena, swing is looking good. He is nice and compact and direct to the baseball. And once he gets the contact, he's finishing through the baseball to give it that extra life. And he's fired up trying to get this Astros offense to come back and put a W on the board. Astros are going to send a pinch hitter up for Jake Myers. It'll be the switch hitting catcher Victor Caratini who obviously hit left handed against Clay Holmes here. So a little meeting on the mound to discuss the scouting report as Joe Espada goes with the pinch hitter Caratini. That was part of the appeal of Caratini coming over and signing in the offseason. He's a veteran but he also offers you an opportunity of a left handed bat coming off the bench late. Getting himself an opportunity against the Yankees closer. So the tying run on first base. Nobody out here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Astros still yet to score on this Yankees bullpen. Need to score at least one to send it into the extras. One big swing away from walking it off. Caratini has faced Holmes four times in his career. He's 0 for 2 with a couple of walks. First pitch off the plate, 1 0. Caratini's got kind of that flat swing through the zone. If he gets a sinker that's elevated, he might have a chance to punch this up the middle or into that opposite field gap. That's where you got to think as a left handed hitter against a guy with a sinker that comes in in the mid 90s. Or just pull it through the hole. Base hit to right. Tying run to second. Winning run to first. Pinch hit single by Caratini. And he'll be lifted for a pitch runner. Mauricio Dubon will pitch run for Caratini. That was a great job by Caratini pulling that barrel through quickly. And it's even better when you have that first baseman holding the base runner on. The shift is no longer employed. 
So there's actually space out there to go get those hits, and Caratini did a beautiful job. Well, here's Jose Altuve. Altuve flying out to left field, the first pitch he saw today, but since then, home run, double, and a walk. Altuve has scored two of the Astros' three runs and bats here with first and second. And nobody out in the bottom of the ninth. Altuve's first home run of the season came back in that third inning on a slider that stayed middle, middle. Now Tuve getting the arms extended, flipping that into the Crawford boxes. Again, a pretty good launch angle on that one to sneak it out. Now Tuve face Clay Holmes on opening day and lined out on a fastball. Now Tuve loves these moments as much as anybody, especially against this team. There's a strike, one of one. Well, these are the moments he's had against this team frequently. If it's been a late inning comeback, it's usually been off the bat of Jose Altuve. He would love to spoil this potential sweep. Dubon, the pinch runner, represents the ball game at first. Pena represents the tie game at second. Altuve's taking a fastball for a strike here. It's one and two. And so apparently he's not looking for the fastball. Ground ball down the line. Great play by Bernie at third. He steps on the bag, and that is a huge game-saving play by their new third baseman, John Birdie. Yankees doing everything right. Everybody in that Yankee uniform has been making plays when they need to. Now Tuve trying to sneak this one down that third base line. Birdie lays out, makes the play, and still has the ability to get up and get Jeremy Pena by stepping on the bag at third. Big force out. Birdie wasn't even supposed to play today. He was not in the original lineup. But when Anthony Volpe was feeling sick before the game, Oswaldo Cabrera moved from third to short, and Birdie was inserted in the lineup and makes a defensive saving play here in the ninth inning. When you've got Jordan Alvarez coming to the plate, I know he's been struggling, and that last at bat saw three straight fastballs and went down looking for a strikeout. But at the same time, you, we always talked about that spot in this lineup being that second spot. This is exactly that reason right here, is you're going to give him opportunities throughout the course of the game, but you hope that later in the game you have him up in key situations where he's coming through in so many situations throughout his career. Jordan only two for 16 on the season, but one of his two hits was the one time he faced Clay Holmes on opening day. Now Altuve the winning run, the tying run now Dubon at second, and the sinker down for ball one. And Jordan knows that all he has to do is relax and trust his swing. Pressure is still on that pitcher to make pitches. Jordan floats one into left field, slicing. It is a foul ball. Dubon would have scored easily, and Altuve may have scored if that ball stayed fair, but it's just foul. It's one one. That is too bad. I, that's what I was anxious to see, TK, is if Jose Altuve would have had the chance to score. Mm. And that. <laughs> The Yankees have gotten so many of these soft contact base hits, and the Astros miss a big one just by about six or seven inches. <laughs> That's how we feel, Jordan. So close. One and one the count. Inside, two and one. That's wide. Three balls and a strike. Kyle Tucker do up next.
Fly ball. Center field. Judge back. Still going back. He eases up on the track. Dubon's going to tag. He'll get to third. Jordan sends one to deep left center field, but he's out number two in the inning. Frustrating. Two baseballs that Jordan has hit in this ball game. Just missing driving the ball out of center field a couple of times. And I thought that was the exact spot he needed to be shooting for was right that home run alley by the gas pump. But maybe just a little bit under it. So it's up to Kyle Tucker. Tucker tied the game, actually drove in the run in the sixth inning to made it a three to two game. He has been on base three consecutive times, single, double, and a walk. Dubon, 90 feet away, is a tying run. Altuve, the winning run at first. Little looper left field. Verdugo comes in, sliding catch, and the Yankees sweep the series. The Yankees sweep a four-game series to start the year for the, just the second time in their franchise history as Tucker's looper is caught by Alex Verdugo. A frustrating four days for the Astros as they drop this one four to three. That's a tough one. That's very tough. The whole series was extremely tough. Kind of a wide range of emotions as you went through these four games. But to finish this series with the winning run on base and not getting a couple of hits to drop to drive it in to tie it or a go ahead. Extremely frustrating. But again, only four games into the season. Obviously, things are magnified when you lose four games to the Yankees. Yankees 101 years ago won a four game series to start a year in 1923 and they've done it again for the second time in franchise history.